In this video, I'm going to show you migrations in Craft CMS. Hey there, it's Judd with Lion Digital. It's a beautiful day out here in Atlanta, so I thought I'd record this one outside. I'm at Grant Park, just a mile or two southeast of downtown Atlanta. So let's talk about migrations in Craft CMS. What are migrations? So let's talk about migrations in general. So database migrations are simply a way to programmatically make one-time changes to a database. So you're, you're managing your schema basically. So you may have an app in production and you wanna add a field, you wanna drop a field, add a table, whatever it may be. And you need a way to do that um, in a safe way. So you need to be able to modify a database um, and also to revert back if you screw something up. So that's what migrations are for. So if you've worked in Rails or Django or one of those other systems, um, you know, you probably run rake db migrate or generated migrations and applied them in the past. So Craft has three types of migrations. They call them tracks. So there's craft migrations, which are app migrations. That's for the craft CMS application itself. That's the crafts rolling out updates. They have a track for those uh, migrations to be run. You may notice this when you, you know, make some updates um, to Craft and it says, hey, pardon us, we need a minute to update the database, that sort of thing. It's usually applying some database changes when you do that. Same thing with plugins. That's the second track, plugin migrations. So add-on developers have these available to them when they need to make changes to their plugin. If their plugin interacts with the database, this gives them a mechanism to, to roll out changes and roll back mistakes as well. And the third type, and the type we're going to focus on today, are content migrations. They're called content migrations, but it's a little bit of a misnomer in that we're not talking about, you know, writing a specific entry or something that your, um, you know, end users interacting with. This is more, you need to make some sort of alteration to the database in kind of a precise or surgical way and, and using project config may not be the right fit. Um, classic use case of these is maybe if you're in an agency, like an agency workflow, where you want to create the same set of users across different projects or you just want to add a text field um, into an existing section, that sort of thing. So let's take a look at these a little more in depth. Migrations handle one-time database changes, so they're kind of one-off things. This is a universal problem in web development. You need to change the schema of a database that's already in production or that you've already built out. You need to add a field, remove a field, alter a field, add a new table. All the major frameworks handle this. It's a universal problem. This We're talking about the craft-specific implementation of uh, this type of thing. When you hear someone say migrations up or down, that usually means you know, up, you're going to apply it, down is you're going to revert it. So up is make the change, down is drop the change. So in Craft CMS, there are three types of migrations. We'll go over those in a second. And these are using underneath the hood, like most things in Craft, Craft has a nice layer of functionality on top of Yi. So if you want to read a little bit more about how the database migrations work, you know, way underneath the hood, you just check out the Yi2 docs. And you can run these via the console, so that's the most common way to, to kind of generate these and run them and apply them. And then also when you're deploying, we'll go over that at the end, you may want to check out my project config video. You get a little bit into kind of what commands should run during deployment. And you can also run these and view them in the, in the control panel. So we'll take a look at a couple examples in a minute. So the three types, this is a key thing to understand. They call them tracks in Craft. This, there's the application track, and these are changes that are being made to Craft CMS itself. So as Craft is rolling out, you know, version three, six, whatever, you know, as they're making these changes, they're tweaking the database. And so these migrations run when you're upgrading Craft. There's also the plugin track, and these are for all the add-on developers as they're, you know, making changes and rolling out updates or fixing bugs or whatever and stuff that affects the database schema. Those get run for the plugin, so that's the plugin track. And the third track and the one we're going to look at is the content track. These are kind of generic migrations. It's kind of specific to this project. I kind of find the word content in this context a little bit confusing. I don't know what a better term would be, but just so you know, when we're talking about content, we're not necessarily talking about oh, you're going to go change an entry or something like that, like content, web content or your CMS content. It's just the term for essentially the, the migration you can create on your own and run for your specific project. So natural question, now that project config is kind of a default opt-in sort of thing since 3.5, Craft 3.5, 
you know, how do these, what's, what's the relationship between project config and content migrations? So project config, nine times out of 10, you should be using project config to manage changes to your project. So as you're changing things in the UI, and it's writing to those YAML files in your in your config project directory. You know, this is the most hands-off way. As you're pointing and clicking, these changes get you know made, and then as you're moving in between environments, they get applied. One thing you can do that's kind of a new new way to do this is when you want to change have fields or sections that are common per project, you can literally copy the directory out of your project config into your new project, and then that'll get applied. So it's a it's a way to kind of jumpstart your development and make things more portable. The advantages for content migrations is these are much more surgical, so you can be more precise about what you're doing in the database. We also have more latitude because you can use any sort of custom logic. For the most part, you're gonna be doing bread and butter things, creating fields, applying fields, adding a section or a new entry type, that sort of thing, maybe fixing something. And another thing that's nice is you may have something, if you're an agency or someone rolling out a lot of projects, you may have something that's kind of a weird one-off thing that you wanna do on many sites. So. In my case, I manage a ton of sites that are very similar. And so when I create a new field, I may need to roll that out for 30 different websites. I'm not gonna copy and paste a bunch of YAML back and forth and then potentially goof up one of the other sites. In that case, I almost always use a migration. So if you wanna check out, there's a console, a series, uh, I shouldn't say series, a group of console commands for migrate. You wanna check these out. So this is most of them here that I'm listing. The ones you're gonna use most often is when you create one. So I've got that highlighted here and then migrate up is when you run that specific one. Migrate all, you usually run when you're deploying and that'll run all the database migrations. A Couple other things, migrate down is when you wanna reverse it. Most migrations you're not gonna reverse and not gonna bother writing the logic to reverse it. If you're really doing something dangerous, you might wanna take the time to do that. In most cases, you're probably gonna write another migration on top of the one you just screwed up to fix it. As you're testing these, fresh, give you a fresh start and kind of nuke the latest migration that you've run and allow you to reapply it. And history will give you the migrations that have been run. So if you look at the migrations table in the database, it tracks all the migrations that have been run on all three tracks. And that's how Craft knows what's been done in the past and what needs to be applied. And it doesn't based on timestamps. So you'll see when we create one here in a second that it uses a timestamp in the name itself. And that's how it knows the sequence to run these bad boys. So let's look at a basic example. All right, let's check out this basic example. So the first thing I would do is let's let's check out the, uh, the help for the migrate command and you can just see what's available to you. Um, you see the, the various commands here. I'm not going to go into all of them. The one you're going to use most often, let's say we want to just create a basic migration. You do PHP craft migrate, and it's going to be create, and then you're going to give it a name. So I'm going to do, let's say, my new field. And then it's going to ask if you want to create it. Say yes. It says it's created successfully. It's going to put this in your migrations directory. Um, this is in the root directory of your project. There's a directory called migrations. See, so just created it. This M probably stands for migrations. This is a timestamp. This is what craft is going to key off of. And then you'll see there's two methods in here. There's up and there's down. This thing says it can't be reverted. That's kind of the default thing. Reverting migrations is really tricky because you're, you're basically rewinding database changes. So it can be done in practice. You're not going to do it very often. So. Uh, plan accordingly, make sure you have backups. Let's just, I'm not gonna actually run anything here. We're just gonna do return true so we can do this. I'm gonna hit refresh in the UI. Within utilities, there's this migration. So it'll show you what migrations are pending and what's been run. Um, you can run with actually migrating this. So I could run migrate up and it would run this or you can hit apply new migrations. It doesn't really matter which. So I did it and did it successful. Now this one was bogus. I just did return true. So obviously it ran. Now, if I wanted to revert this thing, there's craft history, which is gonna do two things. One, it's gonna get rid of, or actually the history, pardon me, the history shows what just happened. So it shows it just applied that. Fresh will let you back out of what you did just did. So it's saying drop the tables and related constraints and start the migration from the beginning. So this is when you're developing it, you may be making tweaks. You wanna you know, basically delete the history so it knows to rerun it. Um, in, this, in this case, I'm gonna say yes. So it's gonna get rid of the history. And then I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say apply the migration you just created. I'm gonna say no. 
And what this will do if I hit refresh here is it's gonna say, hey, you have a migration that hasn't been run. We basically just deleted our history. So we'll apply it again. We can undo it again. And so revert it. And then we can say run it again by hitting yes on the second one. And we do this, no pending, it ran. Okay, that's the basic that's the basic idea here. All right, that was a basic example. Let's look at a more advanced example. Here's a very common use case. You want to add a new a new section and apply a new field. So the order you would do this in is you'd use a migration to create a new section. You'd then create a migration to create a field group and then a migration to to create the field and assign it to the field group you just created. And then the tricky part, and this will really trip you up at first, but once you figure it out, it makes sense, is you're gonna create a field layout, and then you're gonna assign the field to an entry type, and not only the entry type, a tab within that entry type. So you know in the kind of drag and drop UI you get in Craft, you can add multiple tabs. You also get multiple entry types. When you create a section by default, there's a default entry type. So that's what I'm using in this example, but this is just something to be aware of is that step four, if you wanna do this, it can be a little bit confusing if you're not used to the, the flow. So let's look at this in action. Okay, let's look at an advanced example of running migrations. So as I mentioned in the slides, I've created four migrations. So I've got a new field, I'm gonna create a new section, I've got a new text field I want to apply to a field group, and then I want to add this field to this section. So I'm gonna to have to create a field layout. So let's just walk through these real quick in code. So you see the, the up method. Um, I'm not gonna go through all the logic here, but I'm just creating a section. And then step two is gonna be, I'm gonna create a field group. This one's super simple. Then I'm gonna create a summary field for an article summary. So I'm creating a section called articles. And this field layup one is the more confusing one where you get into entry types and you get into the tabs and you have to kind of do a little uh, array merging. So it's a little more complex. But if, if I go here and go to utilities, migrations, you're gonna see there's four of them to run. You'll see currently in my sections, I've got nothing. In my fields, I've got nothing. So let's run these bad boys. So they all ran successfully. They all got applied. They're in the right order because I I generated them using the timestamps kind of in the right order when I use that create method. And if we look here, that created articles field group, created summary field. If we go to sections, I've got an article section. And then if I go try and create a new entry for that default entry tab, I've got this article summary field. So that's kind of walking you through a quick, you know, more advanced example. Obviously, you can do all sorts of things with these migrations. You have full access to all of the different capabilities Craft has. So if you're an add-on developer, you're super familiar with all this stuff. But if you just wanna do kind of a one-off ad hoc thing, requires tweaking the database, migrations are a great tool for that. Okay, so deployment, this kind of goes back. This is, you may have seen this if you watched the uh, project config video. So these are the four commands that you're gonna usually kick off when you run a deployment after your uh, git checkout or your codes copied over. You'll see step two here is migrate all. Basically after you install any dependencies, run any pending migrations. So if you just upgraded craft, if you upgraded some plugins, or if there's any content migrations, run all those bad boys. And then, you know, if there are changes that are not covered or that show up in project config, then you would run that next. And then at the end, you know, you, you probably want to clear your cache so you got a fresh installation. So migrations in a nutshell, in most cases, just let project config do its thing. Migrations are a great tool to have in your tool bet when you want to do something very specific and, and kind of precise. And just knowing that how migrations work generally is super useful when you're running upgrades. You know, sometimes updates might may break or if you see craft running something when you're upgrading craft and it says, you know, sometimes you have to click in the UI if you don't have this automated. Just knowing how this works is definitely a useful useful thing to know in craft, even though you may not use them that often. So there you go. Now you know all about content migrations in craft CMS. Let me know if you have any questions or comments. Uh, I should note that I offered craft consulting and development services. I'm a craft certified partner. So reach out if, you, if you're a B2B brand. Um, feel free to reach out if, you have, if you're a fellow developer or anything and you know just need a hand. I love talking about craft and hope you found this video useful and I'll see you in the next one.